So here's my AR-10 build. I'll be putting together uh, in the link description a list of the parts that I use uh, to complete this. There's a much better video that I'll add in the description uh, that goes over this exact same build. Uh, there's a couple of different parts. Um, There's a reason why I'm making this video that I believe uh, make it a little bit better, uh, a little bit cheaper in certain areas, but overall a good clean uh, build. Let's go ahead and start with the lower receiver. This is the M5 regular lower receiver. Uh, this is one of the spots that you can actually save some money. Um, this costs about a hundred bucks um, at my local gun store, but you can go ahead and get a much uh, cheaper lower receiver. I just happen to like this one. Another reason why I like this receiver is the flared magazine wells and the retaining pin that uh, you can take out with the Allen key versus having to pound it in and marking up your uh, lower receiver. I also wanted to make this as close to the M5E1 build as possible, uh, so that's the reason why I went with this. Next thing on the list is the M5 lower parts kit minus the fire control group. I got this uh, so I can upgrade the trigger later on. I don't have to waste any money uh, buying a trigger that I'm not gonna put into the build. Next thing I got was the Air Precision M5 308 buffer kit assembly. Uh, that was about $45. And I chose to go with the Luth AR MBA1 buttstock. It's about half the price of the PRS uh, Gen 3 stock. And for me, it has all the adjustability, it has everything I need um, for a precision rifle uh, at half the cost of the PRS. So that's why I went with that. One of the significant upgrades I did for this uh, build is a Gazelle uh, G2S uh, two-stage trigger. It's a really nice basic two-stage trigger. Um, right here you can see some of the stats, um, approximately four and a quarter to four to three quarters trigger pull. I'd originally wanted to get this enhanced duty trigger, which is a single stage, but this thing was impossible to get. And after 20 years in the Marine Corps, I kind of like uh, single stage triggers. This is what I'm kind of used to. For the barrel, I went with a Ballistic Advantage 20 inch premium 6.5 Creedmoor barrel. Uh, this is the exact same barrel as the Air Precision. If you look at the specs, they're the exact same thing, uh, made by the exact same company, just a different brand. Uh, one of the things I did different uh, for this barrel is I got a pinned uh, gas block instead of an adjustable one. I know this can be a little bit different than what other people do. But one of the reasons why I got a 20 inch is it fits perfectly in my bag. I have a two rifle bag uh, along with my AR-15. And now we have the bolt carrier group. This is the Ballistic Advantage bolt carrier group. Um, again, I could have gotten the Aero Precision. It's the exact same bolt made by the exact same people, but I wanted to make sure I got the barrel and the bolt carrier group together, so they're made it together. Uh, I also got uh, the gas system, the low profile uh, gas system that's pinned um, all at the exact same time. Uh, the next thing we have is the VG6 Gamma uh, muzzle brake. I love this muzzle brake. I like the low profile look on it. Uh, a lot of people uh, prefer the Epsilon. Uh, I just happen to like the look of this, but it does reduce your recoil down to pretty much nothing. Next we have the Strike Industries AR-10 charging handle. Uh, for me, it's an upgrade. It's better than a uh, mil spec. Um, I'm right-handed, so uh, having a right-handed uh, charging handle works perfectly fine for me. I don't really need an ambidextrous charging handle. I'm not using this in tactical situations. I just need something that's better than the standard uh, mil spec that you're gonna get uh, with a standard rifle. So now we have the M5 upper receiver. I went with the standard upper receiver, the standard 308-65 Creedmoor upper receiver. I did this because for the M5E1 uh, upper receiver that you would get with the normal rifle, the handguard mounting hardware for the handguards are machined right into the uh, upper receiver, which makes it a lot stronger and a lot sturdier. However, you have no options for your handguards. Uh, the only handguards you can get are the ones that are specifically made for the M5E1. 
I wanted to be able to get aftermarket handguards. I wanted to be able to get some lighter handguards because I heard the M5E1 were a little heavy. Um, so I opted for the M5 uh, Atlas S1 handguards. I wanted the ability to put this uh, handguard on my upper receiver and with the M5E1 I wasn't going to be able to and I realized I was going to be kind of stuck with that same handguard the entire time and there was really nothing I can do with it. Uh, I love this uh, handguard. It's uh, so slick and so smooth um, and coming in at the exact same price as the M5E1 M-Lock handguards, um, I chose to go with this. A little bit more diversity, a little bit more flexibility. Um, and coming in the exact same price, I bought this from Granite Ridge Outfitters um, as a combo, and it came in around $303 plus tax. So this is the list that I'm gonna go ahead and link down below. Uh, the upper receiver and handguard combo was 318 after tax. Uh, barrel, gas block, and tube was about 324, along with the BCG was 193.50. Uh, the muzzle brake um, was about 72 and the charging handle was about $46. Lower receiver I got from my local gun shop, but I'm going to go ahead and put a link here. I got mine for about $112.50, butt stock for $131.55. I got that off of Optics Planet, but I put the link for the actual website. Uh, buffer spring kit for $45, lower parts kit for about $48, and the trigger for about $153 understand that a lot of these prices are going to be are going to vary for you because i got some of these things on sale um all together uh the whole build was about 14 1450 so uh that's going to be the price range you're going to be looking at i didn't really include the optics um, as far as the price goes mostly because i went with the vortex strike eagle 525 uh scope um, Vortex has an incredible military discount, uh, so I really didn't want to include the price that I paid for that or this Aero Precision Ultralight uh, mounting scope. Uh, so there you have it. I hope you have fun on your build. Let me know if you have any questions.